go ahead and record. And we'll have it as, as backup too, but I want people to come to your channel as well. I want it to get, get traction right. on your channel. I got 16 whole new followers last night. <laughs> I'm still shadow banned. My shit's not moving. So, All right, let's see. I got to go to live on YouTube. Is it? I'm going to go to your channel so I can watch. I can, I'll turn the volume down so it doesn't interfere with the. It's making me choose an account. Hold on. It's just, it's. Go live. Got it. Are we live? It says setting up your meeting for YouTube live. This meeting is now stream. I'm looking on uh, your. It's getting there. <laughs> I'm going to send the link once your channel pops up. Once it, it's. I'm it does say now live on your channel. Just popped up a notification on my phone. <laughs> showing on my. Hold on. Let me look on my. Are we live? Somebody tell us if we're live. Your meeting for YouTube live. I'm hearing it. Is it? I'm hearing the back. Is it that coming from your channel? How do I turn off the background noise? <laughs> I think it's coming from. So you got to turn the volume. You got to just turn shut down. Or hit the. Go to your. Can you still hear me? Yes. Go to your channel, and go to the volume. Uh, on the video, you can take away the volume. Oh yeah, we are live. I see it. I'm hearing the back. Is it coming from? So you got to turn the volume. You got to just. So yeah, just turn the volume off because I just turned the volume off of mine. I hit the, go to your, can you still hear me? Yes, go to your channel and go to the volume. Angie, we're old, so we don't know how to do Oh yeah, we are live. I see it. All right, I'm going to go back. I'm going to go, I'm going to share the link to my signal group quickly. So yeah, just turn the volume off because I just turned the volume off of mine. All right, let me stop. All right, can you still hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Somebody let us know if you can hear me. Let me um share this. Hold on one sec. Oops, my um editor just I can't hear you, Bryce. You can't hear me? Can you hear me? Donald Strickland says hello. Hi, Donald. I've got your flowers right here. Can you hear me? Um, can you hear me, Donald? All right. Can you hear me? Can't hear you, Bryce. You can't, can't hear me. Can you? Can you hear me? Donald Strickland says hello. Hi, Donald. I've got your flowers right here. He says he can hear both of us, but I can't hear you. <laughs> okay, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. All right. So you know what happened? I just learned something. So I pulled up the Thank video. You on on youtube on my computer and when i turn the volume off it turned the volume off okay so all right cool i have it on my phone now though so i can uh y'all just be uh but now i'm hearing the back okay so i do have it playing on your computer because i can hear it yes okay all right so you know what happened i can hear the so um what i've just i'm just putting it on my phone so that i it's not connected to my does that make sense so it's like not connected to the stream on the computer <laughs> Y'all, we're in our 40s and 50s. Just be able to live this for a moment. Can you hear me? When I turn off the sound on my computer, I can't hear anything. Interesting. Can you Nothing. hear me now? Can you hear me? <laughs> I'm glad you're patient, Donald. <laughs> Can you hear me? Can't hear you, Bryce. So try to turn the sound back on again and then just turn the volume down to the back so it doesn't give the back. People are going to be like, or can you, can you take it? Can you, can you exit out of your YouTube channel on the internet? Because the zoom is what's playing and then just put it on your phone beside you. So you can keep up with the, with the, um, so comment. Sound back on again and then just turn the volume down to the back so it doesn't give it back. Because um 
People are going to be like, yeah, I can hear the, I can, I, I can, it, I'm hearing our conversation in the back place. So do you know what I'm saying? Like, can you, t can you shut it down on your, on your, your desktop and then just put, you can see the comments on your phone. Does that make sense? Does that work? Can you guys hear me? I'm looking at the um, the chat right now. Oh, she's calling. Hold on, hold on a second. Hey. <laughs> yeah, Donald says echo. So I can't, I don't know how to do this. And I don't even mind that we're live talking about this on the phone, but it's kind of funny. Um, so what I would say, so, were you, so what I would suggest trying to do, and if it kicks us off, we can just get back on again. Um, what I would so what's happening is the it's playing. So we, we're, we're, we're streaming this through zoom, right? Zoom is the application that's going through Google, yes, right? So you have your, we can teach people how to do this now, if you're going to teach me. So <laughs> now, what I think is happening because you have your channel also up on the screen, you've got two different things happening. So I think if you just shut, just exit out of your channel because it's going through zoom anyway. So it's already hooked to your oh. channel. And then you can just watch the chat on your phone. So if you want to keep up with the chat, you can just watch it on your phone. Okay. That okay. Makes sense? All right. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I've got it right here. So there's the chat that's up. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Is everything good now? I can hear you. Can you hear me? We did it, guys. We did it. We, okay. So for those of you who ever want to do a live, this is what <laughs> this is what's happening when you're streaming <laughs> Zoom. The Zoom application is connected to you. Here. So there's the chat that's up. Do you hear me? Can you hear oh, me? now I can hear you. So now I can hear the back, the echo. Yeah, I'm turning that down. I, yeah, I'm so I just turn, yeah, I just turned the, the volume completely down on my phone so I can just keep up with the chat so we can get any questions that are coming in or any comments. So yes. okay, um, hey Barbie. Hey, okay. yo, I want to. Can I show my shirt? Yes. So please. I have my, this is the mugshot shirt of Malibu Barbie. Look, you guys, look. Oh, oh I love it. I'm not that, that, you know, cool. Like we're, we're, I'm like, okay, so you've got mugshot Barbie and then you've got whatever this Barbie is. Like, like tea party Barbie. <laughs> I mean, hey Barbie, hey Barbie, hey Ken, hey Ken, hey Ken, hey Midge, hey Skipper, hey Alan. <laughs> Um, I freaking hey, Alan. Love he can fit in all of uh, all of Ken's clothes. Fit him, isn't he the one? Yeah, I didn't. I never dressed. I never dressed Ken. So when I, I said this on my channel when I was growing up, because I loved Barbie. I absolutely loved Barbie. I played Barbie all the time. We had the Barbie Dream House, the '70s. So I was born in 1983. So we had the '70s style. If you guys look at the history, I've watched some of the documentaries, the history of Barbie. Uh, my sister and I had the Barbie dream house and we had Barbie, the, the convertible, the car, like she had in the movie. Um, and we had this bucket of Barbies and we had like three Ken's because Ken, as we'll talk about, was an accessory. I never dressed Ken as a kid because Ken's plastic freaking legs. Listen, Ken was sporting skinny jeans long before skinny jeans were a thing. And to get those damn pants, up that doll's legs took way too much time for an eight-year-old. It was, was like a hipster can, hipster can. <laughs> so Kim was always naked. He was always naked and Barbie was dressed. He had pretend it's just an accessory. And that's why, you know, and, in, 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 you know, like you know, you've heard like trophy wives, like whatever. Trophy like, husband. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's talk about it. Because guys, I freaking loved this movie. I really did. It had a very, it was a very adult movie, actually. We, we, we kind of spoke about that on my, my channel. Um, the, uh, the, the underlying philosophies and themes of the movie were very adult. Like, I don't know if the, if children would really pick up on some of the, um, some of the themes of the, in the theory, like, you know what I'm saying? Like it was very Velveteen Rabbit. Like there, that that very, yeah. and I loved the Velveteen Rabbit growing up. And you know, so and also what the the beginning of the movie was like it gave me chill bumps. The beginning, so you got the baby dolls, you know, yes. and like all that. And that's how I grew up. And it was I could only play with baby dolls. I could not play with a bar with Barbies at all. And I so wanted all the Barbies and all the Dream House and all that stuff and that little that car and all that. I never could have any of that stuff. And I had somebody gave me a Barbie 
and her name was Darcy Doc. I think she was a Dr. Barbie or something. And she was a brunette, <laughs> not the typical, like, not, not stereotypical Barbie. Yeah. But, um, yeah. And I had to leave her like on her stand that she came with up on a shelf. I couldn't play with her. Okay. So my sister and I had Madame Alexander dolls. Do you know those Madame Alexander yes, dolls? I bought um, all those dolls for my daughter. My oh yeah. Daughter. We had like, and we, we had to keep them on the stand. They were on a stand. Uh, we have a ton of them still, but Barbie, no, we got to so many. In the beginning of the movie, guys, it opens up because um, because Helen Mirren is, is narrating this. And she talks about kind of like when Barbie came into existence. And before Barbie came, and I didn't even think about this, nor did I realize this. The only doll, so dolls have been around since probably the beginning of time. You know, you can look at antiquity and there were dolls that girls were playing with. But before Barbie, all the dolls girls had to play with were baby dolls. So the only thing you could play was mommy. That was it. That was all you could play. And of course, many girls love being mothers. It's not saying they don't. But when Barbie came around, it was a different kind of doll. It wasn't a baby doll. It was a fully grown adult doll. And so it, it gave little girls, every time I start recording, that light hits me. My nose starts running. It gave little girls a... Um, a chance to, and, and I've said this quote before, somebody said it in an interview outlet, I thought it was perfect. As an eight-year-old little girl playing Barbie, what a little girl is doing is she is projecting onto the Barbie doll what she wants to be when she grows up to be a woman. And right. that goes beyond being a mother. And of course, they had little kid Barbies, like little kids. So you could yes. make Barbie a mom. Yeah, they were like Kelly, Kelly dolls. Yes. Little Kelly like, dolls, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And Skipper was like her kid sister. Mm -hmm. And so what happened with Barbie is that for little girls, it, it was a huge, um, you know, a huge, it, it gave little girls a chance to be more than just a mother, even in their imaginations. And, you know, there's so many little girls that grew up playing Barbie that are just housewives at the, and that's totally like my sister that's totally fine but it allowed you as a little girl to expand your imagination yes. and to project onto barbie what you saw yourself being when you grow up to be a woman and and i when the first time i heard someone say that interview i was like oh my god that is so true and yes. that opening scene kind of kind of covers that that yeah. all of a sudden little girls and then with the invention of barbie in the 1950s of course now we're in 2023 Pretty rapidly after that, they created Barbies with a specific um, job, like President Barbie, Astronaut Barbie, Dr. Yeah, Barbie. Yeah, yeah. You know, and then, of course, yeah. Margot Robbie's character, she's just OG Barbie. So she's just like, you're ordinary. And she talks about that, like, my, I'm not anything special. And that comes into it at the end. She's not President Barbie. She's not um, Dr. Barbie. She's just the original, like, basic Barbie. Right. And it kind was. of like, to me, it made, it made me think of like paper dolls because I could play with paper dolls. <laughs> yep. I dress them, you know, but you know that you would have like just the, you know, just the, the cutout of this paper doll. And then you had all these paper clothes that you could like, you know. Okay. Yeah. Over. And so I, I, that's what, those were my Barbies. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Barbie, listen, Barbie took some beatings. I will say that plastic doll. And I love, so guys, when the movie opens and they make this, and this is my, you know, I think sometimes like we see in the, in the world, a lot of times people confuse emotions for facts. And there have been a lot of people in our community that have really complained about this movie because of the simplistic way, like the girl, the Barbies are kind of ditzy and the kids are kind of dumb, but they make it very clear at the beginning of the movie that when you see the Barbies moving around in Barbie world, they're being played with by children. Yes. They make that very clear that when you see the Barbies going to the beach, going here, they're being moved around like by children. Every day is the best day ever in Barbie land. Right. Yep. And, um, and so, and so the simplistic conversations that the Barbies are having are coming from like an eight year old child. Like an eight-year-old child, like might go to President Barbie. Like an eight-year-old child's not going to be playing President Barbie and having her talk about diplomatic, military complex. You know, it's going to be like all in favor of Girls' Night every night. You know, it's going to yes. be an, from an eight-year-old's perspective. And so, when the opening of the movie, there's almost like this innocence mm -hmm. to everything with with the play Barbie. 
there's an innocence there with that innocence it's beautiful and i loved i just i just keep reiterating this you guys like when you had a uh barbie like my barbie dream house did not have stairs some of them have like an elevator but my barbie dream house did not have stairs why is this because when a little girl if you've got barbie in, in the barbie dream house up in the bedroom and you decide she's going to go drive somewhere you're not going to walk her you're just going to pick her up and put her in the car and they show that so when you see her like floating down that is a little girl picking up the barbie and putting her in the car uh -huh. And you see, they don't really even drive. Like they sit there and wave to people like as the cars. <laughs> Listening to the Indigo Girls. Yes, like, yes. I'll never hear that song again the same way. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and they talk about this is where the Velveteen Rabbit comes into it because all of a sudden, like every day is the best day ever in Barbie land. And they, they get to Ken because Ken's job is beach. And I had to explain to my boy. His boyfriend, job is beaching off. He's beaching. Yeah. He's beaching off. <laughs> And, um, and so I had to kind of explain this to my boyfriend, like why Ken's job was beach, because these toys, these Barbies were created for girls. And so a little, a little girl, you know, it, a little girl doesn't sit down to play Ken. She sits down to play Barbie. And so Barbie has all the jobs and Ken's just the accessory. So Ken's job is beach, like to be at the beach. Right. <laughs> and, um, and it's like, and they say Ken doesn't even like matter unless Barbie smiles at him. Yeah, yeah. that's one of my favorite parts. He's like, and Ken, or however Helen says it, it's like, um, and Ken is only happy if Barbie looks at him or things like that. <laughs> because, and they talk about the history of Barbie, how Ken was created to be Barbie's like boyfriend. But then at one point, Barbie and Ken broke up and now they're friends. And, and that is true. Like Ken was created to be an accessory of Barbie, the toys. So like he was going to be so as, as Barbie started to evolve in, in, the, in the corporation of Barbie, like Ken was the date to the Christmas dance with Barbie. Ken was, you know, the date, you know, he would he wasn't the main character. Barbie was the main, and 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 I want to say to the men who are all the the truther men who are all pissed about this, you play GI Joes. When you were playing GI Joes, did you have a GI Jane, yeah. or were GI Joes the main character? GI Joe, like this is a little girl's. Uh -huh. I'm sorry, and an eight year old little girl is not going to have complex thought when it comes to men uh -huh. and. Um, you know, it is Barbie's dream house. It's not Ken's dream house. Well, what did he call it when he took it over? My boyfriend laughed so hard when he said it. Welcome to my Mojo Dojo Casa House. <laughs> In the kingdom. The kingdom. Um, I can't get enough of the movie, really. I could just have it on in the background all the time. I love I it. I think I might buy it. I've heard, I rented it, but I think I might buy it because it's really, really good. So what happens, guys, pretty close to the opening. So every, every day is the best day ever. And every night they have a, a party at the disco and uh, Margot Robbie's Barbie says, Hey, have you guys ever thought of death of dying? And it like stops the party. And she's like, I mean, dying to dance. So she's starting to have this existential crisis. Like all of a sudden this toy is starting to have more complex thoughts. And the next day she wakes up and like, she actually feels the cold water. She falls out of the house. Her feet go flat, you know? And so they tell her she's got to go flat. That's, and they're like, and so all the other Barbies she confines in tell her that she's got to go talk to the sage weird Barbie again. Oh. I had to explain. Now my boyfriend is the youngest of three children. He has two older sisters. But my boyfriend was a hellion as a child. He was a skateboarder. He, so I don't know if he was paying attention to what his sisters were doing. Uh, although there was a story where he was jealous that his sisters got the fancy band-aids. Yes. <laughs> fancy band-aids. <laughs> he, yeah, he thought they were fancy band-aids. He didn't know why. why. Where is menstruation, Barbie? I don't know. <laughs> She's like... <laughs> Well, I know. Well, well I, so so I had to explain. Uh, you know, with with the um, what was I saying? So with the with the so she uh, we were watching the scene that create the weird Barbie, like that every little girl and they'll do quick flashes to girls like playing with Barbies, you know, and it showed weird Barbie as the every little girl had a weird Barbie where her hair had been cut, she had been colored on, she smelled like basement, and her legs pulled, and it showed this little like eight year old girl throwing you're going what and like and my boy, so i was like every little girl had one of those yes. and so weird barbie was um was like uh 
the sage, the old, old wise woman. And so Margot Robbie's Barbie goes to see her. And she basically tells her that what's happening is the little girl that's playing with her is having these thoughts yep. about life and the meaning of life. And that's why it's coming through to Barbie. So that's the Velveteen Rabbit that that the essence of the little girl playing with her is now rubbing off on the Barbie. And so in order to solve this problem, to get back to every day is the best day ever, she's actually got to go to the real world find the, and find the little girl. This has only been done once before. And so she goes off to, to go to the real world. Ken sneaks in the back. That's hysterical. She's like, well, do you have your rollerblades? He's like, I never travel without him. Without him. <laughs> <laughs> and they, they end up in the real world. And, um, and there's obviously comedy of errors when they're there because they're toys. They get arrested a bunch. <laughs> um, and they realize when they're in the real world, because in Barbie land, it's matriarchal. The, the women rule everything because it's Barbie, wor Barbie world. But when mm -hmm. they get to the real world, they realize that the men kind of dominate the real world. So all of a sudden, Ken starts to go through his own existential crisis in a way where he starts to realize that he has perhaps meaning to his life apart from Barbie. And right. so this is where it gets really adult and the complex thinking of things because Ken is it Barbie and Ken are just toys. Like we can't take it that serious because they are toys. Um, but then that idea of, of who you are as an individual sovereign person. So anyway, is there anything you want to say about that, Angie? <laughs> Well, it is. It, I love that though. When he gets into the real world, it's like he gets. He's like, "Wow, you know, I can be." I mean, like, ha ha ha, -ha. like ego comes into it. Uh, uh, you know, like, I am man, <laughs> like, and I am, you know, in control, and I, I. But then, you know, he can't. He can't get there because he's 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 only can enough. But <laughs> like, good enough. Yeah, yeah. And when he doesn't have like he walks in, he's like, I'm a man, give me a high power job. Yeah. Like it's gonna be that easy. No, you gotta work for it. Yeah. 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 And mm -hmm. so Barbie And no and no little girls are playing with those Ken dolls. So they're not moving and they're just sitting on the beach. They're just sitting so. on the, yeah. <laughs> just sitting on the side until Barbie needs him, right? Like he's he doesn't like like they're like, where does Ken live? And Barbie's like, I have no idea, because Barbie is Barbie Dream House. So Ken's job is beach. He's just beach. That's all he is. So he ends up like why Margot Robbie is still going in to try to find this girl, to try to find the, the kid. Um Ken Ken ends up like going back to Barbie Land. But there's one scene that made me, that I cried a lot during this movie, mm -hmm. but I have a Scorpio moon. I cried anything anyway, but there was a scene where she was sitting on the bench and she was trying to, she was closing her eyes and trying to get in touch with the little girl who's playing with her. So she's taking a moment to try to figure out where this little girl is. And you see her sitting there and she starts to really process and feel human emotion. I'm going to get emotional. What? Yeah, and the tear comes. She, she opens uh -huh. her eyes and she looks around because she's seeing flashes of the little girl and her relationship with her mother. And so she opens her eyes and she has a tear. And she even mentioned something about how it hurts, but it feels good at the same time, like yes. to have the water running down her face. Like this is a, a human. Barbie doesn't cry, so she's she's expressing the, the the way that they were. The script was written was beautiful, very poetic, in the way that they they expressed these things. Mm -hmm. And she sits there for a moment and she's watching all the people in this park and she starts she sees two people two friends like laughing together and she starts to laugh with them like, oh that's happy over there and then yes. and she sees like a sadness over here like you know yes yeah, so you're seeing somebody it. sitting like this and she's she kind of feels so she's starting to experience empathy she's starting to to feel human mm -hmm. a sense of being human which comes at the end of the movie, they really focus on this. And then she looks over at the bus and there's an old woman. And you don't see old women in Barbie land, right? Because no. they're to death. And she she's, says, you're beautiful. And that old woman says, I know. She just, and yeah. that's so that's so big to me. Like, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it makes me matter, like with the wrinkles, with the, you know, the, the overweight, the, the gray yes. hair. Um, yeah. And she just sits there and, 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 you know, of course, Barbie and Ken have these ridiculous outfits on because the outfits mm -hmm. that Barbie and Ken are put on are obviously over the top. Like they have a cowboy, like it's rhinestone. And That's so right. she's sitting there and she just starts staring at this woman and she just goes, you're beautiful. Mm -hmm. And the woman goes, I know. And she starts yeah. to laugh with the woman and she finds 
she go she goes to the, the middle school and finds the girl that she thinks is a little girl that was playing with her and and it it is the little girl's barbie but the little girl had grown out of barbie mm-hmm. and, and and guys this is spoiler alert so if you if you haven't watched the movie yet you can come back you can pause it and come um and come yeah. back so she realizes that the little girl had grown out of barbie and what had happened was her mother who works for Mattel, who works for Barbie, pulled the little girl's Barbies out and started sketching for new ideas for a new Barbie. And she was using Margot Robbie. And so the mother, because her daughter was getting older and was starting to reject her, was having these existential crises. So Mm -hmm. it was the mother that was rubbing off on Barbie. And is there anything you want to say about that, Angie? Sorry, I was looking at the chat for a second. So... You just keep talking. I'm going to look at the chat and see if there's anybody I need to get. To, we need to get to. So okay. Um. So so they end up. She ends up going to Mattel. She finds they they try to get her back in her box, right? Because they don't want this catastrophe to happen. And she's very confused as to why there are only men that are running Mattel. And when she gets away, she finds the ghost of the woman who created Barbie. And she sits down and has tea. When there's a whole conversation. And the woman who created Barbie the ghost, she goes, you don't look the way that I, I can't, I'm paraphrasing what she said. You don't, you don't look the way that I created you to be. And she goes, I know I'm a mess. She goes, no, you're, you're perfect. Mm-hmm. She's, I, I get emotional talking about it. It's such a profound movie. She's cause she sees the cracks in her that she's not just this perfect, like stereotypical Barbie. No, she has, she's becoming human. And so uh-huh. that the, the worry, the expression in her face is, is starting to come alive. And that imperfect, in that in, from perfect Barbie to now being slightly imperfect because she's human, there's a beauty there now. Mm-hmm. And um, anyway, she ends up getting away. She, she finds the mother. They end up uh, going back to Barbie land with the mother and the daughter, little daughter. And she gets there and Ken has completely turned Barbie land upside down because he's come back and he's told all the other Kens that in the real world, men rule the world. And so it is a, it's actually comical. Like I will say. It's like nasty. um, I I would imagine it just smelled like, like old beer beer and socks. Yeah. Dirty socks, like man cave overload. What is happening? Ken, um, Ken, he <laughs> takes everything he sees in the real world that men are wearing and he puts it on. So, and he sees a statue of a man on a horse. So she, he becomes obsessed with horses because he thinks that horses are like an extension of man. Yes. Um, and so Barbie land, Barbie comes back and, and it's, go ahead. Sorry. No, I'm just laughing because I'm looking over here at the comments and, you know, like I've come a long way in my life or maybe I'm just like circling back. I don't know, but I'm looking over and I see like my high school boyfriend. <laughs> He's like, I can't believe I actually figured out how to get on YouTube to make comments. I've won for this day. <laughs> that I mean, that's a Ken thing. I'm just saying like, okay, good job. That's, Ken. that's some Kennergy right there. That's some Kennergy. That's some Kennergy. Yay. Yay. <laughs> so anyway, they come back to Barbie land and all of the Barbies have been like brainwashed by the Kins to be subservient, subservient to them. Yes. And she's like, what the hell is going on? Well, it turns out she couldn't be brainwashed because she had gotten, she had gotten in touch with the human part of her. And so she was not able to be brainwashed. So do you want, do we want to talk about that for a minute? Like getting in touch with like who you are, knowing who you are on the inside, knowing like, why we came here. Like why, wait, like what, like why? Yes, yeah, sovereign. It's just being. He was becoming sovereign. sovereign. Nobody can rule you. Nobody. And when you have sovereign, when you're sovereign, when you go through, and and how how apropos is that? Because I talk about this a lot with spirituality. Because that's all this really is, right? We think that spirituality is just walking into light and love, and that's it. No, honey, spirituality is going through the darkness, having that existential crisis, not knowing why you're why you're here, fear, thinking about death. It's going through that shadow work. And you've said this so many times, like. 
to light the match, you've got to have that friction. Yes. You're never going to light that spark without it. So So she had gone through a a bit of that and she gets worse for her. And but because of that, because she had faced it, because she had, she went to the wise old sage, the teacher, which would be in my case, the teacher who said, no, you got to take the Birkenstock. You got it. You can't, you can't go. You have to keep going. You have to choose to do this. This is going to be rough. It's going to be hard, but you have to choose to do this. Uh And so she, because she did that, because she went through that, she was able to have discernment. Mm -hmm. And because of that, that human quality, she was not able to be brainwashed. Now let's mirror that into like the quote unquote truther community, because we see so many people who make certain realizations about the exterior world about the nefarious ones and Uh they think that that's them waking up but it's not because what then do they do they replace cnn fox with youtube rumble and telegram so they're switching one devil with another devil because they haven't done the inner work yeah they have not done they're waiting for the med bed they're waiting for nasara which is not the inner work Right. And so they're, they're not saving themselves. They're waiting for somebody else to save them. They're waiting for the fiction part of the fairy tale. Cause they're I waiting for like fairy tale. tales. There's so much truth in fairy tales and but they're, they're just like seeing the, the fiction part, the fun part, the easy part. Yeah. Because they don't want to do the work. They don't want to face themselves and save themselves because it's hard. It's hard to go on the initiates path. That's what Barbie basically did. She went on the initiates path. Right. So, so, um, she was not able. So we see a lot of people like 90% of the truther community is still brainwashed yep. by these fake truthers, right? They're not doing their research. They're not working on themselves. They're just sitting there waiting for someone to come save them when they real when they need to realize that they have to be the one to choose the Birkenstock. To choose the Birkenstock. <laughs> yeah. Choose that Birkenstock. Oh, that was funny too. When her feet went flat, all of a sudden her high heel shoes started to hurt her. <laughs> she got up to the weird Barbie's house. She was like, my feet hurt so bad. It's because her feet had gone when they were in that, that pointed, you know, they didn't hurt to put heels on, but when they went flat, it hurt. Um, so anyway, so she finds that Ken has taken over her Barbie dream house. He calls it, what did he call it? The, uh, Mojo Doja Casa house. My boyfriend laughed so hard about that. He had his, like, all his like human man stuff on. Like a, like a, like a pimp. (laughs) Yeah. Yes. And like what? Like a, I don't know. It was like he was doing all the things. He's like rapper dude. I don't know. Like, yeah. he's just, he's like what like, well, I've, I've watched the movie now a couple of times. If you go back, what what he's wearing, he literally sees all these men in the real world. And he takes a little bit from each man and puts it on him because he, because again, he's going through it. So Ken is also going through his own existential crisis, mm-hmm. right? And he's searching for whatever, where Barbie went deep within herself. Ken is an example of someone trying, who's feeling the feelings deep within them, but looking for exterior stuff to fulfill that. So it's two examples. So Ken and Barbie in this movie are two examples of what it looks like to have a existential crisis, to have a meltdown, right? Um, so at this point, Ken gets real mean to Barbie and, and, you know, cause he likes her, he's in love with her and, and she never, so she has her ultimate meltdown. So this is when she's, she just kind of sinks to the ground and just cries and cries and cries. And she gets pulled up to weird Barbie's houses. Weird Barbie also has not been brainwashed. And that's when Ameri- America Ferreira, I keep wanting to say Amerigo Vascucci, but that's the guy who literally explored and founded America. That's <laughs> what so it's America Ferrari. Wrong, wrong, wrong century. Um, and she gives this big speech because uh this monologue, because now Barbie has really hit rock bottom. And this is when she starts to say, I am nothing. I have no ability. I'm not President Barbie. I'm not teacher Barbie. I'm not Dr. Barbie. I am just plain old stereotypical Barbie. Mm -hmm. I am nothing. And isn't that such, isn't that something we've all felt? Yeah. Like where, I mean, people, you know, and me too, like you, you go, you think you got to do all these things like to get through life. And, you know, you get this car, this house, this, you know, the, the husband, the kids, the, you know, all, all the things, the private school, whatever it is, whatever it is. And then at the end of it, you're still going to be that old lady on the, on the bench. And, um, with maybe you're just there sitting with yourself and you're, you're, you're just with yourself. 
And if you have not <laughs> found yourself by then, then you're going to be in that low. Yeah. You know, well, yeah. it's, it's the same. So what she's in that moment, what she's expressing is exactly what Ken is trying to do, validating her own self through exterior accomplishments. Mm -hmm. And that's not the essence of a person. And so at that point, uh, America's character, the human, d says this long monologue. And she goes and she talks about what it's like to be a woman. And this incredible monologue. And uh, you guys will have to watch the movie to watch it all. But she's some in that monologue. It is exactly what it's like to be a woman. 100%. And so there's also that the Barbies are also under the impression that they have like helped girls little girls like their purpose has made little girls but when but but when she goes to the real world she realized that's not necessarily true let me stop for a second and because I, I this made me this morning when i was getting ready for this because of course everybody uh, i've been seeing comments about my flowers and stuff yes i went out, out in the yard and did all this pink stuff <laughs> i was like i got pink roses growing out there let me let me set it all up and um donald strickland is watching and these vases came from him um I just got such, we've got such sweet friends here, but this is an old book that I, gosh, probably a year ago, I started reading it on YouTube and I haven't finished it. And I, in this movie just brought it back to life for me. This was a book that my mom, when she was getting married, um, or maybe she was first married, her mother-in-law, my grandmother took her to the Baptist church, in Albany, Georgia. And they did this, they studied this book. It's called The Total Woman. And I just opened, I was like, I'm going to read something from it, but I, I haven't even read the whole thing because I was really going to read it like you do when you read books, you know, on, on YouTube. And uh, I just opened it to page 69 and, and it says, I'm just going to start here and it's going to be really short, but this is like what we're talking about, like kind of with the relationship stuff it says, for instance, your weary man comes home from the office longing for a quiet evening. You've been cooped up in the house all day and want to get out. There's instant conflict with two egos, each shouting me, 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 or you have a little extra money. He wants that new car and you have your heart set on new carpeting. <laughs> Conflict. He wants to go to the game Saturday and you want to go shopping. And so it goes. Every couple has this problem. How can two different egos fuse their two different opinions into one? Some don't. Often these conflicts are resolved when the parties go their separate ways instead of growing together. The biblical remedy for marital conflict is stated. You wives must submit to your husband's leadership in the same way you submit to the Lord. God planned for a woman to be under her husband's rule. I'm just going to stop at that. But you see, like it all. Yeah, and that's not that's according to the satanic Bible, you guys. That's right. That's not, that's not mm -hmm. the way Yahshua viewed women mm -hmm. as equal. As equal. Um, yeah. It, and, and America's monologue, she like goes off and she's like, you have to be skinny. But you can't say you want to be skinny. You have to say you want to be healthy. But you, but it really means you have to be skinny. You have to support women, but you also have to stand out and, and be, or you have to be part of the sisterhood, but you also have to be your own independent. She goes, and at the end of the day, and she goes, and at the end of the day, everything is always your fault as a woman. It's always yeah. your fault. Yeah. You know, and it, it's just, it, it was a beautiful, very, very beautiful monologue. And by her saying that, one of the Barbies who's been brainwashed snaps out. So it's almost like in that moment, the little girl playing with that Barbie, that humanness that was rubbed off kind of catches that got, kind of catches her breath. Uh -huh. <laughs> and so they go around Barbie land and they basically kidnap all the Barbies and get them back. And then they, they have to figure out because the Kens are going to change the constitution and Barbie land to like basically make it so Barbie has no power. The Supreme Court. Sorry, I'm just seeing that like the Supreme Court. <laughs> the Supreme Court. So um they just so so the human woman basically is like, this is what you have to do, which is so it's comical because it's what women have had to do since the beginning of time. Mm -hmm. You're gonna have to manipulate these men. Yep. <laughs> you're gonna have to use your sexuality to do it, and you're gonna have to pretend to be super submissive. Mm -hmm. So Barbie goes to her own dream house where Ken is living, Ryan Gosling, and she knocks on the swinging doors. And because he says, You're either going to be my wife bride or my long distance, low key, non committal girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I snort. <laughs> 
It's so wow. funny though. The way that I mean, Ryan Garvey. <laughs> my my boyfriend was saying, like, you know, Ryan Gosling, he always does like dramas, like very serious roles. And this role, this comedic role of Ken, he rocked it. Like he did such a good job playing <laughs> Ken. Like he was hysterical. And he looks like Ken. But um, so she knocks on the door. And she's like, I'm ready to be your long distance, low key, non-committal girlfriend. And he's like, I have to go think about it. And of course he did. So anyway, he goes like, cool. Well, I'm going to, can I, can I play my guitar at you for four hours or something? Can I play my guitar at you? <laughs> can I play my guitar at you for, you know, <laughs> which how so much, it is very adult. And I, I just, but I love it because it's, it's really true. It's so true. And I remember when I first started dating my boyfriend, I basically sat him down and I was like, listen, in all of my twenties and in my early thirties, I would do shit with boys because they wanted, and it was so boring to me and I hated every mm -hmm. of it. And I was like, I am not doing that anymore. I was like, you, I, my time is valuable. If there is a movie you want to go see that I don't want to see, you're welcome to go without me. Like I was very clear. I'm not doing that shit anymore. Cause when you're young, you will sit there and fake smile while a boy plays a guitar at you for four hours because you want him to like you. And instead of saying, no, I don't have time for this shit. Right. So I learned all the grateful dead songs. <laughs> <laughs> some of them but you know what I mean like really I dated this guy once who was obsessed with like alien movies like sci-fi alien I can't stand guys even though I talk about aliens I am not a fan of sci-fi at all like I, that's the most boring sure. I, I can't watch them and I, I know about these things but I can't oh, watch I know so I would, I was in my twenties at the time. I would sit every weekend in these fucking boring movies, alien predator movies, wasting precious time. I'm not doing that shit anymore. If you want to go see those movies, you can go see those movies. But the fact when they, when they were sitting there smiling at him while they're playing, all the Barbies are smiling at their kids while they're playing the same song for hours and hours. It's like, oh my God, I felt that. Like I felt that as a woman, I felt that. And so they play. I want to read some of the comments. Can I read them for a minute? I mean, you can keep talking. I'm going to look for some. Um, thank you, Katie. I love my flowers. <laughs> I love my yard. I love gardening and stuff. Um, Dragonfly says, sorry, she's late. She was actually watching your other video that you had posted, like on your YouTube. Yep. And um, see, um, I love um, what Katie says. America's Barbie speech, in case you wanted to read it. And then you go on to say America yeah. it's literally impossible to be a woman. You are so beautiful and so smart. And it kills me that you don't think you're good. It makes me get cry. That's what she said. Yeah. To and yeah. It's literally impossible to be a woman. And you were so beautiful and so smart. And it kills me that you don't think you're, you're, you're good enough. You have to lead, but you can't squash other people's ideas. You're supposed to love being a mother, but don't talk about your kids all the damn time. <laughs> yeah. So true. Like yeah. you have to be thin, but not too thin. You can never say you want to be thin. You have to say you want to be healthy, but also you have to be thin. You have to have money, but you can't ask for money because that's crass. You have to be a boss, but you can't be mean. Yeah. You have to lead. Thank you, Katie. You have to lead, but you can't squash others' ideas. You're not. Yep. 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 Yeah. And, and my thing is, I mean, I'm, I'm, I don't know if I'm crazy. Am I crazy? Like I do. So I do, I do so many different things. I have so many different ideas coming at me and um, ex mother-in-law told me pick, you need to, can you just pick one thing? Like when I was doing songwriting, I was so excited to, to share with her like a song I had written and with Mike Deacle, like famous dude, you know, and I'm like, I'm, I'm very excited about this. And I actually wrote it about this land, you know, like I, it's, pretty cool. Do you want to hear it? She's like, can't you just pick one thing? I'm like, no. And why should I? <laughs> yeah. You can do all these things. Yes, uh, thank you. Things. You guys, if you're watching, Katie's got all the, um, the monologue totally in the chat. Uh -huh, I love it. supposed to stay pretty for men, but not so pretty that you tempt them too much or that you threaten other women because you're supposed to be part of the sisterhood, but always stand out, always be grateful, but never forget that the system is rigged. So find a way to acknowledge that, but also be grateful. You have to never get old, never be rude, never show off, never be selfish, never fall down, never fail, never show fear, never get out of line. It's all too hard. And I think women across the world, um, 
it's all too contradictory and nobody gives you a medal or says thank you. And it turns out, in fact, that not only are you doing everything wrong, but also everything is your fault. And I think that monologue, I watched an interview with the cast and Ryan Gosling even said, as a man, even said something about the power of that monologue. Of, yeah. of what that means um that that uh for women to carry that load i kind of want to like like put that on the wall somewhere she goes on to say i'm just so tired of watching myself and every single other woman tie herself into knots so that people will like us and if all of that is also true for a doll just representing women then i don't even know because even the doll that's just a representation of women it is a powerful monologue and I, I, um, you know, being a woman is definitely difficult and there is a lot expected of you. It's, it's, I, I was watching Christian Walker, uh, who is Herschel Walker's son. Uh, I love he's a great account to follow. And he taught, he was like defending stay at home mothers. And I loved what he was saying because he was saying like, you know, the man will sit there and say like, oh, you don't contribute to the finances of the house. Well, no, because the stay at home mother is running the house. That's what she's contributing. She's contributing to the fact that your house is clean when you come home from work, that you have a meal cooked for you. That the She's kids the manager. Are, she's, she's the, the manager. manager. Mm -hmm. And so your money is also her money. And when a woman does get a job, when she does have a career, most of the time, in a, in a situation, not only is the woman working full time outside the house, but she's also still expected to be the one at the home doing all the housework, cooking all the meals, where the husband's just responsible for that. And I say that, and I have to say, I am blessed with my boyfriend because if that were to be the case, I know if we had a child, he 100%, he helps me with the house. I mean, we both work. So he we have our own things that we do. Like he takes care of all the floors. He takes care of all the dishes. He does all the cooking. I do, I do all the, the dust. We, we both deep clean together like once a week, but I do all the dusting and make the bed into the laundry. So we have, so I'm very blessed. I'm very, very blessed to have a partner who, who pitches in, but I know a lot of women who are working two full-time jobs, being a mom, being a wife and their job. And, um, my best friend, my, yeah. my best friend. I mean, it, it's so much, I can't wait for her to watch this. Um, the other um, last week, um, we usually do happy hour on Thursdays, and she stopped by after her after work, and she just I knew she was so tired. I just said, "Sit down, let's watch the Barbie movie," <laughs> and that's what we did. Yeah, and I cooked for her. I got up and I was like, "I'm making you. I'm I'm gonna bring you over some food. Like you just sit, you just sit here and just watch this because." <sighs> Yeah, it's that good, y'all. If y'all haven't seen it, it's a great. It's that good. I'm gonna say, um, Katie just said, so powerful. Love you, gal. You gals, you're always there for us with your research, and I'm so glad I could help a tiny bit. Thank you, Katie. We love you, Katie. You know, it's mutual. <laughs> I'm because guys, I'm recording this, and I'm gonna put this on my channel like later on this week because we want to get traffic to Angie's channel because we're all we're all about the sisterhood here. To you, sisterhood. No, so y'all gotta help me get monetized. <laughs> you're close you're like we got to get you you got to look like 300 more subscribers y'all so share the shit out of angie's channel so we can get her monetized y'all y'all get her get her up there um so um so i'm gonna wait for a few days before i put it on my channel so we can really get but katie because this is being being pre-recorded all the comments won't be on my channel so I'm, thank you for posting that and i got to read it out loud so people who catch the replay on my channel will hear the speech i um, screenshot a few of katie's comments i mean it's so powerful just because i mean it, it is so powerful um and, dra yeah. and, uh, and Dragonfly said, day decent daycare is 1K a month. I, mean, I don't have kids, so. But you're going to work. I, I just don't, I, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I was, I was a stay-at-home mom that started a pickle company in 2008, but I was still like stay-at-home mom. Like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, when I think back on it and I'm like, I, I'm not trying to like prop myself up or anything, but I really look back on it and I go, I don't know how I did it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I work so here's the autopilot or something. I don't know. Right. <laughs> and I work from home. So I do YouTube from home. I'm out of the house like one day a week teaching classes. But I think about that working from home, you think that would, if I had a kid, it would make it easier. I'm more busy working from home than I ever was when I worked outside of the house. Like, because when I'm recording, the door is shut. I can't, you know, it, it's, it's, 
it's wild. And to think like my, my sister is, is a stay at home mother. She has three children and thank God my brother-in-law is amazing. My brother-in-law is so great. Um, he treats my sister with so much respect, but she runs that house. Like she is like, yes, you say she's the manager and she's picking the kids. She's got two kids. Uh, my nephew is about to turn 11. My niece is nine. And then she's got a COVID baby. who's two. So she's got very different age groups. And so she's picking kids up from school. She's taking them to to their activities and she's got a two-year-old that she's still in diapers you know she's uh cleaning the house she's helping with homework she's my sister cooks like crazy my my brother-in-law's family is italian so my sister learned a lot of the italian dishes from his family so she's mm -hmm. she home makes their own bread you know they've got two well mo my my sister's dog mo just passed away so they have one dog right now but typically they've got two dogs big dogs that need to be let out and walked mm -hmm. it's a full-time job mm -hmm. and let's as a as a woman for in most situations women are the primary caregiver when it comes to children and that makes sense the child came from the woman's body so there is an intuitive and i know in some houses that's different i get that there are some houses where the dad is the, the primary caregiver mm -hmm. but but because the mother like when i was sick as a child when i would get sick i didn't want my dad i wanted my mom you know there was a time, there was a time when my son he used to have like croup and like asthmatic things when he was little and i was out of town i was and I was, we live in Athens, y'all. So I was down in Albany, Georgia, in the hospital room with my grandma who was in a coma. And, you know, we were all trying to like do shifts, like staying with her through the night and stuff. And so I'm sitting, I'm like late at night in this hospital room. And I get a phone call and it's my husband. And he's like, I think he needs to throw up, but he won't throw up. And I'm like, he doesn't need to throw up. Like, I know what's happening. Like, he was trying to make our son like throw up because he was like, going, uh, uh, like he couldn't breathe. <laughs> I'm like, no, I said, put him on the phone with me. And I get on the phone with him. I'm like, you know, three and a half hours away. Ago. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, he's got the whole world. In his hands, he's got the whole wide world. He's he, his mama. And, and he immediately calmed down. And I said, go get an Advil. <laughs> like, at least get that inflammation down out of his windpipe right now. And then I can, I can walk you through what to do next. But I mean, but that was it. Like, I mean, I'm not trying to like, you know, like talk bad about, you know, dad, I'll tell daddy, you. but, but it is like a mama thing. Yeah. You know? My mother tells this story all the time because I was my parents' firstborn child and I was a very fussy baby. I was born with a lot of health issues, a lot of digestion. I had a very bad stomach, so I cried a lot. And my mother was exhausted. I can only imagine. I know most parents, when babies are newborns, are exhausted. Um, and my dad said to my mom, and they were like 26. They were, I mean, so young. I look back now, like, Jesus, people were so young when they had kids. Um, and my dad said to my mom, I will... I'll sleep in because, you know, back back. I think a lot of times kids sleep in the room with their parents. Now, back in the day, our nurseries had our, our crib in like a single bed. And my dad uh -huh. was like, I will sleep in the nursery with Bryce. So when she wakes up now, at this point, my mom couldn't breastfeed. She only breastfed fed me for like two weeks before she dried up. So I was already on formula. Um, so it was possible that my dad would be able to feed me at night. So my dad told my mom, I will sleep in the nursery with Bryce. And so when she wakes up, I will deal with it so you can get a full night's sleep. Well, my mom said she went to bed and then she heard me crying and she laid there and I kept crying and I kept crying and I kept crying. And my mom was like, okay, Lee, my, my, you know, get the baby, like get the baby. And I kept crying. So my mom got out of bed, walked to the nursery. My father was flat asleep snoring and I was crying in my crib right beside him. Yes. Now so, I, I, on the flip side, I have, I have, I, you know, my husband did, you know, he, he was very helpful. So I, with my firstborn, she was like you, like she screamed for hours and nothing soothed her, you know, for when she was first born. And it was one night I'd had no sleep because I'd been doing what your mom was doing every night, you know, just with no help. And then finally, thank goodness, I'm just going to be honest here, but thank goodness, you know, husband walks down the hall and looks around the corner and I'm going, what is wrong with you? Like I'm holding her up. I'm like, I can't try everything, you know, like, and I didn't realize that I wasn't producing, you know, like F milk, nourishment, yeah. you know? So um, anyway, he's like, give her to me <laughs> hand over 
the screaming box, you know, like whatever it was. At that point, it was just like, I, I don't know what to do. Because you, you, it's, it's your whole worth, honestly. Yeah. Like, I, I felt like I was failing. And, and, and you know what? True story. Um, her, it's when they're first born, you go like every week or so, like to, to have these little appointments with the pediatrician. And I remember going and telling him like how much she cried and how, and I remember that pediatrician, I hope he's not watching. He probably might be, probably his wife is, but, um, he said, we'll just go home and produce more milk. Yep. <laughs> And men really do think we're witches, don't they? Like we could just bippity boppity boo boo. I guess. I guess. <laughs> I'm serious. I'm not making this up. And this is the same pediatrician that whenever my youngest, my third child, we're talking about my first child with the go home and produce more milk. So then I've had, you know, two more. And then my youngest, who's 17 now, um, when she was in middle school, she was missing some vaccines. And so we, I had to take her in, you know, so she could go back to school and we go to that pediatrician and, and the nurse practitioner says, Oh, and she, they, they don't look at me. I'm in the same room, you know, with my daughter and they don't look at me. They look over at her and they go, your mother hasn't brought you in in so long. You're not even in our system anymore. And, and she, my daughter said, I'm never sick. <laughs> Yeah, like, I'm sorry. But anyway, I got on a tangent, but the whole like go home and produce more milk. Like, am I a cow? I know. Like, I remind, my mother told me a story once when she was a little girl, she was struggling, our little girl, when she was a teenager, she was struggling heavily with cramps, like really bad cramps. And her, my grandmother took my mom to the doctor to see if there was something they could do to help with the cramps. And the doctor said to her, basically, suck it up. At least you don't have to shave every day. So he said to her, yeah, we do. I shave my legs every single day. You're welcome to my boyfriend. I shave. My daughter legs. needs to go to a Brazilian wax place and have his balls. Exactly. Waxed. Are I'm sorry. You see, that's my... awful of me to say that, but it's like, just like, it's, you know, like it's, it's. I mean, it's awful. Yeah. But that's the what's what that's what the America, uh, America Ferreira's uh, monologue. I mean, that's it. That's what so women across the world can like uh, resonate with that. Like you're never good enough. You're never good enough. You're never. Yeah. And I love that you, you're expected to be pretty, but not too pretty that you intimidate other women. Mm -hmm. You know, and that again mm -hmm. takes the and I see we see that in a lot of conservative religions where it takes the responsibility away from the man. So like if a man assaults you what were you wearing right you know and like you can't and, and I, i'm here to tell you ladies if you were raised that way men good men can control themselves trust me there are good men out there that will never assault you right so so it goes back to that um should we talk about the end of the movie because i i bawled at the end of the movie like bawled are you checking the comments I'm looking at comments. Yeah. Um, you fickled it all out. <laughs> yeah, I did. That was interesting. Now, oh, Amy Boyd says she was not interested in the movie, but now she's got to watch it. Mm -hmm. It's Amy, so good. Amy. I know, Amy, Amy. It's good for all women. It's really good. It's 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 not a kids' movie at all. Like it is not a. No. I don't think children would understand. I think it's too. I wouldn't take my child to see this movie. No, like my 17 year old and I watched it together, and we would just like look at each other about some, some certain things, like. She totally, get, you know, she's old enough, you know, like, but it's like, don't take your little, no. little girl. The funny me. scene at the beginning where Ken, uh, before she goes off on her journey, where the party's over that night and Ken's standing outside and she was like, you can go now. But he, and he was like, but I want to stay. And she's like, to do what? And they just kind of stand and like, look at each other. And he goes in to like kiss her, but she just smiles because they don't know. <laughs> They don't because they're dolls. They don't know what boyfriends and girlfriends do. They don't like understand that. And so there's a little girl playing with them. Like, yeah, kids. making them kiss. And that's it. But they don't. And and the, the scene, my my uh, my boyfriend laughs so hard when they get into the real world. They're in Los Angeles and they're rollerblading. Um, and they go back past these construction workers, and they're like, and she talks about that. That was a cool scene too, where people are looking at her. And she talks about like her feelings of like feeling threatened and people are looking at Ryan Gosling as well. Ken, because he's wearing a ridiculous outfit, but he's like, no, I don't feel threatened at all. You nope. know, 
And she turns, and so she's starting to feel that as a woman like that, that attention that's not necessarily wanted. And uh, when the men start like cattle calling her, she basically, she goes, I don't have a vagina. Cause, cause Barbies don't have, Barbie and Ken's don't have, they have, they're, they're, they don't have any part. Genitals. Right? Genital. Yeah. And she goes, we don't have genitals, neither does he. And they rollerblade on And Ryan Gosling goes, I have all the genitals. Um, <laughs> I don't because, have I mean, heart. Yeah. Cause he, he's starting to become like ego, like the ego of a man, like, <laughs> You know, I've, I've I want to say something. I mean, I hope my friend doesn't mind. So an old friend of mine from Albany was at, I was at a um, tailgate Saturday from UGA against the Gamecocks. I thought about you because of your, the Bryce stadium and all that. Um, yep. Yeah. Yep. My family. Yep. And, you know, and I, I'm not big football and all that, but so I went, you know, to this tailgate, which I normally don't. And um, anyway, so it's a sea of red solo cups and, you know, everywhere right it's red and black everything right and then <laughs> this old friend comes walking by and i'm gonna show it on the screen he's gonna be so mad at me <laughs> i made I, I made it into sort of a meme but um i'm like um just he had the hot pink cup and i had a pink solo cup as you can see in the picture we're like we look like them when Barbie and Ken were like in the real world, in the human world, where everybody's like doing all that, like the the human and their bright pink stuff because it's Barbie. World, so even Ken wears pink in Barbie world. Yeah, I just I had to. He's gonna hate me for this, but I had to do it. I mean, I think it's so funny. <laughs> I love. Well, speaking of seeing that, remember the scene where they try to put her back in the box at Mattel, and she, you know how Barbie had the plastic around her wrist. You know, yes. prop, and she gets in and she feels the, pra the, the the plastic tightening around her wrist. That was powerful. And she reacts to it like a doll wouldn't react to that. But a human to feel that to fe to react to that restraint to all of a sudden, like realize that you you're you're, you're being restrained. Yeah. Um, in the so, box. Put in a box like you know. a box. And that, that restraint. The minute those those that that plastic goes around her wrist, she like <gasps> she has that reaction, which shows. But it all builds up, guys, to the very last scene, which I bawled. Like, talk about the Velveteen Rabbit. So at the end, they're figuring things out. I won't give too much away, but, you know, America Ferrera, the woman, she gets a promotion. She gets, like, to be able to create more Barbies. All these people get these endings. And I think it's was it the little girl that said, but, but what's Barbie's ending? I think it was right. someone said, what's Barbie's ending? And so Margot is standing there. And everybody kind of looks and all of a sudden the ghost of the, the creator Barbie walks up and she goes, I didn't create you to have an ending. I'm going to get emotional. And so the creator of Barbie and Barbie walk off together and she says, humans have endings. Ideas don't. Ideas don't. I'm going to get emotional. It's so, I yeah. sobbed watching this whole conversation yeah. between and then Margot Robbie says uh, she she wants to be human. She's made that decision that she really wants to be a human. Mm -hmm. And she asks to me that reminds me of like when people some believe in star seeds coming down. Like oh, we we all come down. We chose to come here to human. Human. <laughs> well, she asked Ruth, who is her creator, right? She's Ruth, what created Barbie, named after her daughter. Mm -hmm. And she goes, "I want to be human." And I can't remember. I'm paraphrasing the conversation. But Ruth says, you don't need my permission to be human. You you don't become human. You just discover that you are. I mean, I'm mean, so emotional. Yeah. And yeah. so this whole movie, this whole existential crisis that she's having, even the reaction to being restrained is her discovering that she is human. Mm -hmm. Discovering that inner side of her. I feel like in what I'm going through right now, I don't want to get too personal, but you know, in my own life right now, I feel like that's a whole bunch of it. Like even like the whole, like being in the box and like, um, just, <laughs> you know, and like going, Oh, and it keeps, it, it's like, we, we repeat it over and over and over until we just go, finally, we're, we just, we just set our own selves free. Nobody's going to set myself, me free. And I being, have to do it. Yeah. And being human is being vulnerable. You know, so many, so many cultures demand a level of perfection, a, a level of faking it, a level of making it look like, I mean, look at social media, look like you have all your shit together, but that's mm -hmm. not being human. You came here to fuck up. You came here 
to skin your knee. You came here to, to struggle through the aging process. That's the whole point. And that is why this movie is so deeply spiritual because it's following that journey of, of the darkness in order to find the light. Now, the last scene or the very, very, very last scene. I know some people said they didn't like the last scene. I kind of laughed at the last scene. She's, she's human now. She's so in her Birkenstocks. She's in her Birkenstocks. So mm -hmm. she's wearing Birkenstocks and, and a blazer and she's, she's in the car with, uh, with a, I like actually a thought also, I was like, I like the Birkenstock blazer look. <laughs> I know. I was going to keep it. Like, you know, everything no, Margot, was Margot, Margot anything. Robbie's beautiful. Margot Robbie is gorgeous. So like anything was good on her, but, um, but she, she's in the, she's in Los Angeles. She's a human. Now she's in the back of the car. America, her daughter and her husband are dropping her off at an appointment and they're trying to, to, to psych her out, to pump her up, to get her excited. She's like, okay, wish me luck. And so she walks into this big building and she goes to the reception desk. And this actually made me emotional too, because she gave her name and I forgot the, the, the last name of the person who created Barbie. Is it Handler? What's the last name? A Ruth? Handler, Handler. Is that? Yeah. Let me, let me look it up quickly because it was powerful because Barbie is just Barbie. Like Barbie doesn't have a last name. Let me look up the last name. Uh, Barbie. Carol Custer says goosebumps. And I wonder why. I mean, it's a, it's a power roof, roof yeah. handler. So, so roof, roof handler is the creator of Barbie. Um, and so she goes into this appointment. She goes up to the reception desk and, and the lady's like name, please. And she's like handler, comma, Barbie. Barbie. He's so <laughs> excited to give her full name because she's never done that before, right? As Barbie, she <laughs> Barbie. She actually has a surname now. She has a last name. So she is she's human and she's so excited. And it turns out she what, what appointment is she going to, Angie? Oh, her gynecologist. She's going to a gynecologist. <laughs> my gynecologist. And I'm like, I guess she's got genitals now. <laughs> yeah, because she became a human. So she's got a vagina now. And she's so excited to be doing this little human, uh, you know. And, and it's like, girl, girl, why? Like, no, I was like, the funny thing is, is going to the gynecologist is one of the most stressful things for a woman. Having a pap smear is just like, very I'm stressful. I'm like, I, have a I only go if I'm pregnant or like, you know. I don't. So, yeah, I've, I've always terrible. felt funny about that. I was going to say something there. about that, I guess. But, you know, I'm still here. No. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't mess with, I, 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 guess I, I haven't been in 17 years. <laughs> no, I think you're fine. Like I, th yeah, I, I have a little, I have feelings about that and mammograms and all that kind of stuff, but that's just my own right. personal thing. So, so yeah, that's funny though. I, that's, it's so, I love that scene too. I'm like going, rewind. I'm like, why is she, why is she so excited about She's that? a human. She has a last name. She has a vagina. She's, She's last wearing her Birkenstocks. She doesn't it have makes me radio. think there's got to be a Barbie movie too. Part like, two? yeah, when she she's didn't go, Ken stayed in, Ken stayed in. Oh, that was a thing too. Let's back up a little bit uh, when they're still in Barbie land. Cause then you see the coming of the coming together of Barbie and Ken, they have this conversation um, where she basically is telling him that he doesn't need her, that he has to, he has to find out who Ken is without her. Yeah. He, and she, you know, it, which goes, is but, awesome. <laughs> yeah. And she he goes, but it's Barbie and Ken. Like that's how they've been sold. Bar and she goes, no, it's Barbie and it's Ken. Yes. It's Barbie and it's Ken. It's not Barbie and Ken. It's, it's mm -hmm. Barbie. And maybe Ken. marriage licenses should say something like that. Like, um, or like when they say like, um, like at a wedding, like, um, all right, you know, after they kiss the bride or whatever, and they turn around, they're going to walk back down the aisle. The, the, you know, the pastor should say something like introducing <laughs> it's Barbie and it's yeah. Kevin. <laughs> yeah, but what a powerful lie, like to be like, yeah. you're not a part of me. You no. have, and as you get older, especially in romantic relationships, you learn that a romantic relationship is never going to work unless both people are sovereign and who they are as individuals. You can't right. rely. And at the end too, they bring the power back to the Barbies, but the kins come to her and ask, can we have, and they're like, okay. So they start to find that balance between the masculine and the feminine in Barbie world. So, um, so it's just an incredible movie. I really, you know, the, the, as the law of one would state, 
we know that there's a cult in Hollywood. We know that there's a corruption in Hollywood. We get that. There's corruption everywhere, though, guys. Mm-hmm. So nobody everywhere. is everywhere. But being an actor, being an artist, is intuitively on the positive side. Why? Because people like Margot Robbie, Ryan Gosling, the person who created this movie, they're doing it as a service to humanity. They're serving others by expressing these stories. Like anytime you express yourself, you're you're bringing that truth to another human. And that is- yeah, a I would imagine that most of like the best actors, actresses are empathic because- Oh, absolutely. To be able to, 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 to portray that, like to feel and, and put it out there on the screen like that. So. And Margot Robbie, her resume, like the, she's an incredible actress. The, the, the roles that she go, if you guys are not familiar with her resume, go and look up. I mean, she played- she I played, wasn't familiar at all. I'm played, just like, now I, I want to look at it all. Amazing. She is amazing. She's played Elizabeth, Queen Elizabeth I in that, uh, where she was amazing. She's uh, played Tanya Harding and I, Tanya, which was amazing. Like she has, she is an incredible, her American ac- accent never slips. She never slipped up once. She's Australian. She never slipped up. Um, the whole cast was, I didn't know that. I didn't know she was Australian. So Australian. Mm -hmm. Um, and and, and she never, her accent never slipped. Um, she, the woman, I can't remember her name, the woman who played weird Barbie. She's an incredible actress as well. She's got an incredible resume. At first Um, glance, yeah. When I first like looked at, cause I was like, in my kitchen cooking, like, you know, kind of just had it over and they didn't, I looked over, I'm like, is that pink? Like, you know, (laughs) she's about singing in a minute. Uh, but but you know, she had that look. Okay, well, she had the cut the hair, the way the hair yeah, was the yeah. girl, the little girl cut the hair. Yeah. And I, I just, you know, and I know I know we're preaching to the choir here, because I think most of our friends watching agree. We know there's corruption, guys. Absolutely we know that. But that doesn't mean that every person is corrupt. And what this I've just made my mind up. I'm not gonna judge judge an actor or judge someone until i have actual evidence that they are bad people mm-hmm. and showing a picture with someone covering their eye is not evidence it's, really like, it's not illegal i had a picture eye. of me you know there's one like one of my old facebook you know profile pictures or whatever where i'm going like this or something yeah like, like, yeah because like, like, your like, your darkness can't create anything like, like, like a secret you know and i was trying to i was marketing like you my know, mom used like, to do that to us in church she you know, like, shot yeah. it and put it on some grape a while back, and they're like, "Oh, look, she's." I, and I'm like, "My goodness!" Like, no, that's just delusional people, uh, deranged uh, derangement. Who, um, again, that's what we were talking. They're lacking that discernment because they haven't done their own work, mm-hmm. and so they're easily brainwashed. They're easily manipulated, um, and it, you know, it, to paint things black or white is a sign of a mental disorder. So to say that all of Hollywood is bad because a few people in Hollywood are bad is a mental disorder. To say that all the music industry is bad because a few people are bad is a mental disorder, right? It's all, you, you, you have to judge individuals based on individuals and mm-hmm. common sense. I know common sense ain't so common anymore, but let's just ground ourselves quickly and have some calm. What these people do, the bad guys do is so disgusting and so nefarious Mm-hmm. That it's a huge secret. It's not so much a secret anymore, but they've kept it a secret because if everyone were to know, it would have been it would have been shut down a long time ago. And I lived in Los Angeles. I've known a lot of people in these industries, and they don't. They're just trying to make movies. That's all they're doing. Mm-hmm. They're just trying to make movies. They're trying to be artists. I wonder. I think I've told you the story before. Um, back in the nineties, um, I was doing some modeling and I'm working at a bank and. I was actually offered a job with DreamWorks <laughs> and it was like a free place to stay. Um, and I didn't really know any details, but anyway, I got married instead. And I've always kind of wondered though, like what, I mean, what, would I have been okay? Like what, I don't know. But, but I think about that sometimes too, what, what you're talking about, because I'm not a bad person. So what if I ended up had gone you know, out? No. And I, know. And I t- mm-hmm. sometimes these people, so they do their work, they do the movie and then they have to go market the movie. They have to go on press tours and market it. And now, they're, they're just standing in front of photographers. Yeah. And like, they're, they're contracted to, this is their contract. So the, they come in the photographer and the photographer might not even know why the boss told them to cover their eye. Right. Yeah. So they're just like, whatever. It doesn't mean anything. And I, I pray to God that if, if anybody watching this has been judging others, oh, but by the grace of God, go I. Judge not least ye be judged. 
it's a, there's a huge stretch to say just because someone covers their eye in a photograph, they're doing what the that's a huge leap to make. Huge. I mean, my hair keeps falling into one eye. I know. Well, I've gotten that on YouTube. I, I posted a video once I had my camera, but I was filming my dog in the car. And Ravi like looked to the side and looked back again and somebody accused him. My dog. Your dog. I'm like, <laughs> So I'm supposed to train my dog to look at a camera. He's a dog. Like, no, he heard a noise. He looked over and he came like, are you fucking, you are a sick human being. If that is what you are mentally deranged, you are mentally sick. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If that is what you're thinking. And that is not, but I think I said it on my live last Thursday, which by the way, guys, thank you so much for all of the support from that video. I've gotten mm -hmm. so much support and we actually did an eaching, eaching, Eaching reading because I wasn't planning on doing that. That was going to, uh, it was going to be Angie and me. And I know. I'm so sorry, but no, no, I, I think I, this worked, worked out better. This worked yeah. out better. Yeah. It did. Because I think I was supposed to tell my story and, um, and, and, and as proof as to why you don't judge people based on you, you know, what Kim is doing. Oh, and by the way, she's, she's having a meltdown on Telegram right now because of my one video um that's the movies back in like, watching like just we'll keep doing keep keep um keeping you know our frequency high and hmm. yeah it's a it's comical um after i released my thursday live they went through on the telegram channel enough is enough and deleted a shit ton of voice messages so nothing just goes to show you they're watching mm -hmm. and nothing screams guilt than getting rid of evidence and i, I laughed i'm like we already have everything it doesn't mm -hmm. matter what you delete. We have everything. Mm -hmm. I have the thumb drives of all the voice messages. I have photo photocopies. Two different states have everything, right? They know the tell. They've been watching the. You know there is an investigation, and um and so of course she doubled because narcissists do that. They double down. They never just say you know what I was wrong. They just double down. Um, I just want to clarify. She did say. She made up a story that I had been abducted after I was born and raised by a family that isn't my family. That's a lie. My fan, if you see my parents, they're my parents. And I laughed when I saw that. I was like, this is she's just making shit up now, just just making shit up. Um, and and so you know, I just thank everybody for the support and it's kind of comical. She's having a meltdown. Um, uh, somebody posted uh voice recordings of her screaming at Trump. Um, and so it's, it's, a uh, it's it, but that's an example as to why you just don't judge people based off of, of hearsay of gossip, okay. right? You need proof. You need proof. Mm -hmm. And, um, nothing she said about me is right. And, um, you know, all, for all the people on that channel that are believing her, you're just as asleep as your normie friends who believe CNN and Fox news. You're just as asleep as they are. Well, a lot right. of these people watching right now don't know anything about that group, but, um, but just, but it all does tie in like, well, you know, they're honestly, it's like for me, like what's happened with me with, uh, with kind of a hate group, it's been a few years ago, but they were all like women, like women. Yeah. And they are the very ones probably right now that are calling themselves feminists and they probably hate the Barbie movie and they probably, you know, but, and they got me canceled, they think. You know, I'm like, no, I mean, <laughs> I'm sure you can't, you can't cancel you human actually were the friction I needed. <laughs> like, yeah, you can't cancel a human being. Like, that's not possible. We're human beings. That's no, it's it's horrible. Well, I will say too, and, and my boyfriend, he's in he's on he's slightly in that group under a fake name. And he's looked at some of these people who've been very supportive of the things that she has said and gone on Facebook and looked them mm -hmm. up. And he's like, and this is going to sound so mean, but it kind of goes back to what America Ferrera was saying. These are older women who appear to be kind of frumpy. Um, I would, I would imagine they probably um, don't get a lot of attention from their husbands. Um, they're probably very insecure. And so for them, and that, and that makes them perfectly vulnerable for a cult, right? Okay. So you have this person that is going around saying all these things that they want to hear and telling them they're they're part of some secret military operation and, and they they they're valuable so they're putting they're placing their value as ken was doing they're placing their value on something outside of themselves and so and and, and i hold on know, one second what does it mean on 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 live chats when it says message retracted 
because I oh, saw somebody it. just deleted it. They just deleted. Oh, it. oh okay, so okay. Typo or Dragonfly, I saw it before you deleted it, and I, I'm with you, girl. That's the only reason why any of us were on that group was to hear Bryce. That's what she was saying. She, she Aww. joined it only to hear you. Well, and, I found one of, one of the moderators to actually told uh-huh. me because I never paid attention to the numbers of that channel because I, I don't. You guys, I don't. I'm very blessed to have a big platform, but I don't judge people based on their numbers. Like I, I'll do any channel. Like I'll, I'll go on someone's channel who has no subscribers if I like. You're them. on my screen. I don't. I don't judge people that way. Like that's. There's an algorithm. There's a. There's a. There's a. You know, it's it's stupid. Mm-hmm. So I never, and I was always willing to help people out. But a moderator did tell me offline after this happened that I was responsible for for building that channel. That that channel grew. Yes. When I started doing those shows. And so that sucks that I was treated so poorly um, when I actually helped them. Well, it's a cult now. Like they're, they're, they're definitely, um, that channel is definitely a cult. Um, It it meets all the requirements to be a cult. Uh, I get that a lot. And just like locally, even like people just like, are like, Oh, if, if Angie, can you say this on your, you know, social media? Can you say this on your Facebook? Can you, can you promote this? Can you, I'm like, well, hold on. Let me, let me look at it. I mean, I know this is going in a completely different direction, but it is kind of the same. Like I even had like a, a grocery store one time wanted me to promote some corn that they were um, had gotten in from like UGA and they were so excited about it. When I looked it up, it was all like this. The excitement was because it was like a Monsanto, like Monsanto, whatever, you know, um, GMO corn. I'm like, um no, but so I try to do my research. I'm like, I know I, I'm so sorry. You're a friend of mine, but I can't anyway, but I, I don't know. This is like going in a different direction, but yeah, you, you did bring so many over to that channel and um, yeah. Anyway, well, the funny thing is too, and this is, so I left the channel because Gordon had created a lie about me. And so I left, I'm not going to work for free for someone who's creating horrific lies about me. Mm-hmm. And then for my punishment for doing that, they fair gamed me just like they do in Scientology. And they created even more lies about me. And, um, I will say they, uh, when I, last time I saw Kim, she was like negative $70 in her checking account. And I sat there with her and I said, well, first of all, Ken, if you're really working for President Trump, I don't think he would not pay you <laughs> to make money. I mean, come on, y'all. Like, you have to make money to eat. You have to make money. And she was like, no, that's for the wrong reason. Like, no, you're martyring yourself. And that's not. A, Nobody a- cares about him. I mean, whoever. I yeah, mean, no, no, no. Well, she, it's she, so crazy. Yeah. She, so I said, you know, I was like, well, you have a platform. I was like, and I was explaining to her that when you have a big platform, the best way to make money is through sponsorships. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was like, I can, you know, a SIA, the company that sponsors me, they reach out to people like us in this community because they're, they're anti the controllers too. Yeah. And so I said, I can introduce you to the person who's ahead of the influencers. If you would like to make some money because you, you know, you deserve to make money. And I, I did the same thing for Gordon as well. I was like, let me introduce you to the head so that you could, cause I knew Gordon was struggling financially. And I was like, you know, so that you can make some money you know and it's not going to cost your subscribers anything they're just buying ad space basically you know and so it will help you be able to put more shows out because somebody's paying you so you can pay your bills um and anyway so then he went on this they, they, they created a smear campaign around asia which good luck with that guys that's a corporation i would never want to be in a lawsuit with a corporation let me tell you um and he was uh talking shit about me for taking sponsorships well honey he's hawking gold and silver He's literally doing a Ponzi scheme. So sponsorships, I mean, sponsorships are what TVs, like when you watch a TV show and you have commercials, that's sponsorship. Yep. That's why you're able to watch the TV commercial, the TV shows, because the the Mm -hmm. advertisers are paying for for ad space. So, um, and of course the ad sense on Google is so screwed up that it literally, and I am so grateful. I'm actually in talks with HelloFresh as well. So hopefully that fingers crossed for me guys that that will go well. I made a couple of I made a couple couple of their recipes. I know. I told I told my boyfriend <laughs> that you made a couple of their recipes. Um, and so <laughs> no, I, I mean, like I I was like the chef. Like it's yeah, my yeah, yeah. 
So I'm, I, they, I sent, we, we're in emails right now. So hopefully HelloFresh is a big one to get um, for sponsorship. Mm, so that would be awesome. Uh, really helped me a lot to be able to continue to contact. So having a SIA and HelloFresh, which we're still negotiating. So fingers, say some prayers for me, guys. Fingers crossed. Um, so, oh my gosh. If you get that, I'm so excited because, you know, I'll, you know, I'm, I'm the cook and I would, I would just love to like actually. Well, and that's the funny thing because my boyfriend. So easy for me to promote that. I have to, I have to make a commercial, like I have to make commercials to put on my videos, um, mm -hmm. the deal. And they, and so we were like, how, like, how am I going to, I can't cook for shit. How am I going to film this? He was like, well, this will be easy. You can add your comedy into it because you, you know, show how easy they've made the recipes for someone like doesn't, who doesn't even know how to boil an egg, you yeah. know? So, um, so it's, it's, it's uh, so fingers crossed guys. I don't know. We'll see. There's a lot in the works right now. I've been offered some positions on other networks to do some shows. Um, so it's all good. Like she can't, you can't the tree. In my opinion, this is just my opinion. I believe that she is an organic portal. I don't think mm -hmm. she has her upper chakras. And I think a four, fourth density <laughs> negative entities use organic portals and they, they think they're channeling God, but there's a yes. way to know if you're channeling God or not. Um, and so, and so she's channeling. I, I told my boyfriend last night, we were laying in bed and I was like, this is hysterical. I was like the fourth density negative being that's messing with her is having the time of his life right now. <laughs> so it's kind of like uh, the Barbies. Yep. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> it's like somebody playing with like the Kim, the Kim doll. The Kim doll. Yes. And the Gordon doll. So um, I actually, Angie, do you mind if we share screen? Actually, speaking of cults, I want to promote something quickly, if you don't mind. Do you I mind? don't mind at all. I also, while we're, while we're getting there, my earrings, can y'all see them? Yeah. They're Barbie. Um, oh, I love it. My oh, friend yeah. owns a store here in Watkinsville, Georgia called Wildflower. I'm sure she sells online. And uh, awesome. after this, I'll try to link her store and website and stuff. But um, yet I, um, I curate gifts around town for like, there's this like awesome dad on Twitter that always like gets me to do, um, send a package to his daughter in Statesboro and then his daughter here at UGA. And so I love going in her store. It's the best place ever for me to go and get like Dolly Parton stuff, UGA stuff. And now Barbie, she's so smart. Barbie stuff. I got my little jumping um, Kirby smart pin from her the other day. Like um, I got some sequin like thing I'm going to wear to the next game day because, you know, I'm such a, a, a football fan, but she's got it all. And I mean, so, what a smart, what a smart woman. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. And, and they're, I mean, I think they were only like, I want to say like 18 Isn't bucks. If you send me her link, I'll put it up on my community. Yeah, I will. I will. Um, but yeah, awesome. And she's right here. So locally, Watkinsville, Georgia, over in Market Center. But I, I'm sure everything is available online. Absolutely. She's I awesome. want to answer a question here from Angela. Make Our sure house. HelloFresh isn't selling lab meat, guys. Angela, I'm a vegetarian. Um, I'm a very strict vegetarian. So I would only be promoting uh, HelloFresh's vegetarian meals. So I'm against any type of meat, lab grown meat or free range meat. I'm very against that personally. Um, I don't want to cause the suffering of us of another creature of God. Um, if you guys were around for yes, Angela, by the way, my um, the the dishes that I made were fish. Yeah, right. they, they have, I don't think you can lab make fish. Maybe I'm no, wrong. And and I will say too, like I've been using it, like I've been using HelloFresh now for a month. I've been trying it because of this, just to see if I like the. And it's amazing. Like it's really. And I I only do vegetarian. Like you on the on the website, you go and you you set up your um account and you put what you want. So I put vegetarian. They have a vegetarian option. They have a pescatarian option. Fit and healthy option. So I put uh, vegetarian, fit and healthy. Mine says pescatarian. Yeah you know, and I, but the, the, the actual, and I'll try to, maybe I'll find the link. Um, but the actual meals that I made were, Oh, that'd be so cool. That'd be so mm -hmm. cool. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, and so, yeah, so that, so Angela, I would never even promote the, the meat based anyway, cause that's just oh, against my, my, I mean, if you eat meat, you eat meat, that's, that's your choice, but that's against my moral compass. So, uh, personally, so I would not. Yeah. Um, so anyway, and I will tell you, so we've got a troll in here, project reject. I've had to block that. I person. saw that. I saw that. Um, they're very fundamentalist, very abusive Christians. Um, so I've had to, like, uh, who cares and all that. Like, yeah, they're um, very, guess, you know what? He cares a lot. Yeah. 
Yeah. Oh, you should say, yeah. um, don't even block them. Go, you do. <laughs> yeah, obviously, because you're here and you're a troll. And that's sad for you. That's pathetic for you that you're just trolling people. Um, and mm -hmm. um, and yeah, a lot of people care. Actually, you should go look on my channel. Actually, no, I blocked you from my channel so you can't see. But anyway, guys, so speaking of cults, um, I think I told you guys on my channel that I was contacted a few months back by CNN. And I had to take my own advice. <laughs> So my excited, first though. reaction about CNN was like, oh, shit, oh, shit, because CNN is like what the clown news network. But I took my own advice because not every obviously we can't paint everyone black who are are evil, who works for the, the, you know, and I got to know this guy pretty well. He was working on a documentary about negative 48. Now, if you missed that live on my channel, I talk about my interactions with negative 48 and it really was only for the jesus strand i separated myself after the jesus strand but can we show do you mind angie if we show the um the uh the promo for the documentary that's coming out about negative 48 sure i'm sorry i was just like i was just like blocking that troll so oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> i never had to do that before I'm yeah. So, yeah, it, yeah i love it Come on, trolls. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, that person, they, they troll me, they troll Aquarius Rising. They're one of the, they're the Christian army, right? Trying to tell us all. They're very brainwashed, very brainwashed by the cabal. So um, bless their hearts. Um, can you give me permission to share screen so I can share this, Angie? Oh, okay. Do you want to do that? Uh, you, you know, know share screen. So go to share screen at the bottom. There should be okay. a button you click beside it. You allow, you see it? Okay. One participant can share it multiple. Can I say multiple? Yeah, multiple. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Here we go. Here we go. Okay, you guys. So I'm going to play. So techie. I know. So techie. I'm not, I've had to learn this, guys. And I want to give a big thank you to my friend Kathy. I think she was in the chat earlier. She, I had this person this to my email. Um, so here's the promo. You've got to try Kachava. Can you all hear Kachava that? Is the yes, we can hear it. Someday. On the Come say hello. These people. I want Rosie to say hello real One quick. Second. Oh, she'll, she'll come back in a minute after this. Okay. All right, cool. Let me let back this up a little bit because this is what's coming out, okay. you guys. In the whole story. Why are these people waiting for the return of JFK? You don't believe JFK is dead? <laughs> Antonio O'Sullivan goes down the rabbit hole to understand the followers of I've this I've seen man. that board. I saw that board at CNN. So they showed it to me. He really got to the point where he believed that he was going to save people somehow. And the conspiracy theory that's oh, tearing yeah. families <laughs> apart. It's true. Can you stop it for a second, Bryce, and let Rosie just say something? Yeah. I, she's like, what am I saying? What am I saying? Where's my script? What, where's your script? I'm just kidding. No, we always just wing it. So this is my youngest daughter, and we watch the Barbie movie together. Rosie, do you have your Kennergy? Are you Kennergized? I'm Kenough. You're Kenough? <laughs> You're Kenough? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. We've already um, had to block some trolls. You want to start working for us, Rosie, and block trolls? I'll be a moderator. You, you could be a moderator. <laughs> trolls are fun. But we don't actually, you know, the funny thing is, I will say there are channels that get trolled a lot. I don't get trolled that much on live shows. It's it's pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. even my, my boyfriend even said something about that. He was like, he was like, you really actually have really awesome people. So I'm super grateful. But mm -hmm. yeah, I just look stopped. looking at herself. She's like, um, Bryce, she she cut her own hair. It was all kind of one length, um, like a week or two ago, and she like did some kind of wolf cut by herself. Girl, like, <laughs> you cut my hair. <laughs> Love you, right. oh, Barbie. Bye, Barbie. <laughs> Bye, Barbie. Bye, Bye, Barbie. Bye, Barbie. Bye, Barbie. Bye, Barbie. Space is cool. Okay, I'm sorry for interrupting, but that was like just too good. I mean, yeah. I haven't seen her. Like, she just came downstairs, and I was like, oh. I'm sure she's about to go somewhere. Really cool. So. Well, they're just you can know, guys. On the 24th of September, the Negative 48 documentary will be dropping. I know it's CNN, so there might be some like, Ooh, but you know, I know I've gotten to know the guy who is helping with it from CNN, and he's a really good guy. Like, I actually really, even my boyfriend when we went to CNN. So that board, let me share a screen again. They show a board. I got to see that board um, in person. So let me back it up again so you guys can see this. Okay, on the whole story, why are these people waiting for the return of JFK? You don't believe JFK is dead? No. Donnie O'Sullivan goes down the rabbit hole to understand the followers of this man. Why do you think people like you so much? He really got to the point where he believed that he was going to save 
people somehow. And the conspiracy theory that's tearing families apart. It's true torture. No one should know this pain. The Whole Story with Anderson Cooper, Sunday at 8 on CNN. What? Yeah, so I'll be watching it. Um, and, and, and for what I know from what they got, you know, and, and I will say behind the scenes, the reporter from CNN, when I was at his office, we were talking about it. He said, you know, Donny, Donny O'Sullivan would ask them like, with, and I never was a huge fan of the, I did some Gematria shows, but I was like, oh my God, this is in my head. I was thinking this is boring as shit. Um, he, you know, they would say, you know, one, two, three, and they would give the, they would say that, that Gematria is the same as this Gematria, which is JFK's Gematria. And Donny would be like, but, but what does that mean? Right. And that's the question I always had too. Like, but what does that I've been that for a little while too? And I'm like, oh my gosh, it was like consuming me for a little while, you know, just well, like thinking my- like A A to Z, you know, 26 letters and 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 trying to like add it all up all the time. <laughs> my gematria for my name is the exact same gematria for Princess Diana. Uh-huh. When I was first told that I was gonna like, look like her. <laughs> well, I, was totally, I was like, but what yeah, what does that mean though? We just it's just when you were on the dark outpost, I remember people saying that. I look like that. well and then so because the gematria of my name matches diana that was the first conspiracy theory about me that i was actually princess diana and that <laughs> at first i laughed at it but then it fucking pissed me off like it made me so it made my blood boil because i was like no there's no mask here i am not i am younger than princess william or princess william i am younger than prince william i am in between here. i am not princess diana stop it my work is my work i am not i am not uh, my, my work is not um that you don't have to be a famous person to make a difference in this world that's what pissed me off as i am I, my name is bryce elizabeth watson i was born in 1983 in south carolina i am not princess diana i'm and not I, princess diana i, I, I never thought i had to ever I was wondering, like that. i'm gonna i'm probably gonna make that like a short like you know like, like my princess- name is <laughs> oh my god and i was in a text conversation with someone about it and i was like he literally believed I was Princess Diana and it fucking pissed me off. I was like, I'm not, I'm not her. I am not her. I am, I'm not old enough. Like, screw, first of all, screw you for thinking I'm that old. Damn, Bryce, I wish people were thinking I was some kind of princess. Well, she's, she's, she's not <laughs> the age. Like, I'm like, I'm, 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 no, I mean, I just, it just made me so mad. I was like, so you're saying all my hard work, all the research, the hours and hours and hours of research I just knew that stuff because I'm secretly princess. This is when conspiracy theories become dangerous and become junk conspiracy. Mm-hmm. Anyway, it just, it made me so, 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 so mad. Yeah. Kathy just posted Sunday, the 24th, the 8 PM Eastern. And they will run it again at 11. Um, so, uh, I guess I'll be tuning into some CNN. I know. Right. Well, <laughs> we don't even have cable. I wonder how we can watch it without, uh, about cable. Um, Amy says, been thinking about looking into hello fresh. Yeah. Amy, just try it. You can try it for like a month and you can always stop the subscription. It's not that expensive. It's actually really pretty reasonable. And all of, so the first time we opened the bag, I mean, I can, I can send you a, um, a, a, a discount if you just, Email me at ficklechickle at gmail. Well, the first time we opened the bag, because I put it for two people, because there's only two of us, my boyfriend was like, is this two servings? I was like, yeah. He goes, oh. Because <laughs> he thought it was like one thing. Is, there's no waste. You know, there's no yeah. waste. There's no waste. They send you exactly what you need. We made the other night, we made this like barbecue uh, pizza that they sent. It was one of the best. It was so freaking good. It was one of the best pizzas. I hardly ever finish my plate. I was literally that that was so good. My stomach was so full and I was like, must keep eating because it was just so good. So um so I've yeah. done it before. I think a really good um thing with like HelloFresh, those kind of things is like if you're going on vacation and you're like you've you know you got an Airbnb you've scheduled or whatever, you got the address. You can have like meals shipped to those places, you know, like yeah. where you're gonna be, and you're not having to worry about like Cause I know for me, like when I go like on a family vacation and then we're stocking the fridge there and I'm cooking and, you know, then you got to have a cooler to bring everything back home or you're just throwing stuff out that you didn't, you ended up going out to eat instead of cooking. You know, you just, there's no waste. And another thing I really love about getting these kind of things when I'm on vacation is um, that the boxes have like the ice packs and all. Yes. Yes. And 
I will just go, well, I don't even have to take a cooler anywhere. I save those ice packs and I still use those boxes a lot. And I'll just, when I go on trips, I'll use, I'll reuse the ice packs and I'll just put stuff in them. And then whenever I'm, you know, I take food to wherever I'm going and then I just, you know, I can discard the box. Right. <laughs> like, right. I don't have to carry around, like, you know, by the time I'm back home, there's nothing in my car, no cooler, no, you know, no empty cooler. No. Yeah. I love it. I, I mean, it's I think, exciting. Like I get my I'm resourceful like that y'all. <laughs> See, I get it's, it's like a it's like a surprise, like a mystery box when you open it. Yeah. To see what they what they've actually sent you, and but you know it's gonna be like so for me. I have a lot of food allergies, so I can like put in there like what I do not want in my in my food, and so it's it's a really I mean the produce they have sent has been really like they sent this huge pepper like we had this huge I had never seen it but it was beautiful so yeah I would suggest trying it. You can always cancel it. You know you got it. You got to buy food anyway. Yeah, like on the app, you can say like, I can't believe we're doing this whole HelloFresh thing right now. We need to like- I'm not even, a, not even sponsored. <laughs> so this is, so, I'm just doing this out of, so HelloFresh, this is but just- kindness of our hearts. But um, so, so on the app, because I have it, you know, it's right there. Yeah, fresh. Oh, I, need, I don't um, have the app. I need to get the app. I I'll go on and like skip, 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 and they'll they'll ask you like, why are you skipping? I'll, I'll tell them my budget. <laughs> like whatever. Yeah, you can pause. Like we're gonna go out of town in a couple yeah. of weeks. So I'm gonna pause it for that week so that that. And you can have it sent to different addresses. So like, if I want to like help my daughter in Brooklyn, New York. Yeah, can, it's a it's a fun thing. I'm like, oh, she would love this menu that they're yeah. offering um, this week. You know, and I'll just send her like a meal and she can cook it, you know. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. easy too. They have really clear and you can put the level of difficulty for the so listen, I, I mean I paid, I ordered four meals for two people and I only paid forty bucks. Yeah. And that's that's actually pretty cheap. Because you think about going out to eat. If you go out to eat, you're easily spending double that. Especially so. me, because I get the wine too. So <laughs> now I just go to the grocery store for like just the little things like bread drinks snacks that's it you know and that's you know and ravi we have ravi on a raw diet we have him on, we have him on Catherine edwards diet but we found a company to mail so he gets he gets his hello fresh box too for a different company <laughs> so but listen you know, i gotta jump off soon because i have actually have a meeting i'm actually uh another thing that's happening guys is i'm going to be doing some work for gnostic tv um my channel is still going to continue to run as it is but i'm also going to be doing some stuff for gnostic tv as well which is like a netflix for um for spirituality so i have a meeting in a minute with them with the producer of that channel so it's all good you know that just goes to show you what you know the devil can't can't take someone down if there's if god has a purpose for them so always remember that guys um that when you're with god when you're in the light there's nothing that that anybody can do to you to destroy that I had Michelle asking, like, can I say my address again to get a discount for HelloFresh? Yes. It's ficklechickle at Gmail. Do you want to and spell that for people? I, I typed it into the chat, but still, okay. because this is going to be like not, you know, all these messages will go away. Um, P-H-I-C-K-L-E-C-H-I-C-K-L-E -E -E at Gmail. So it's like pickle, but with a P-H. So fickle chickle. And um, anyway, yeah, I should, I think I've got some... Um, things there and you're welcome Michelle and so when I get when I get your email I'll look and see because it I, I think that's the email I use for them but um I'll, I'll figure it out and send you send you a link yeah oh yeah and if, if it goes well with hello fresh guys keep, keep your fingers crossed I'll be able to give you a discount code it not now <laughs> I know just put it out there guys I mean it's a big company it's it's been in the works for a little bit but you know fingers crossed that's a, and it's a big and they're really good to their like their rates are really good for their content creators and that is literally because listen like YouTube you guys know YouTube isn't the greatest I mean they 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 give it and they take it then they take it away YouTube like they yep. they and 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 they've done this weird thing with the so now no one's really making anything off of AdSense so the sponsorships is under your control so basically the sponsorships they're going they're going to the, the creator instead of going through google and so they so that's if you guys are thinking about starting channels that's like the best thing to do is sponsorships um well, and I, real quick I, I know like i'm trying to get monetized on this channel but i also just started another channel and because i'm trying to start a new business and um there's no content on it y'all but it's called giggle kitchen oh i'll subscribe <laughs> 
on YouTube and um, and I'm planning on putting all my recipes there because this gets kind of crazy over here. Yeah, yeah where it's yeah. like so you've got people that just really want to see the food or me cooking or like a like a lifestyle kind of thing. Right. And so it's called Giggle Kitchen or yeah, it's Giggle Kitchen. And I yesterday even got the website for it. So I have Giggle oh good. Website. Yeah. So I'm excited about that. I'm planning on having like people come in and cook with me and tell stories. So it'll be kind of like this, you know, just kind of um, a good chat and learning about people, but also cooking. Yeah. That's exciting. Well, Mm -hmm. send me the link and I'll put it on my community tab too. Yeah. Um, Yeah. There's nothing there yet. There's nothing there yet, but I went ahead and reserved. I wanted to reserve the channel and reserve the website. Um, Oh, that's awesome. That's mm -hmm. awesome. But I got to hop off because I got a meeting in like five minutes. So, um, All right. so I love you, Brian. I love you guys. I love you, Angie. Bye, Barbie. <laughs> Bye, Kens. Bye, Barbies. Bye, Barbies. <laughs>